we jump into today's episode, we just want to remind you to rate and review our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And if you're up to it, follow us on TikTok and Instagram at HBO Girls Rewatch. And if you care about us even a little tiny bit, subscribe to our YouTube page. Hey, I think it's time to lean into Lena now. Let's get into that episode. Welcome back to HBO Girls Rewatch. I'm Amelia. You heard her. <laughs> <laughs> And this is Evan. We're <laughs> coming to you live to review the ultimate episode. Oh the episode god. we've all been waiting for. Oh my god. Beach, Beach House. House. Season 3, episode 7. Oh my god. Like my I mouth mean, is still swollen. Okay, yeah. We Well, we recorded Last earlier this I week. I had ulcers and they still have them. Well, you keep having lemon hummus. You no, know- that's not lemon. It's organic, regular. Oh. I misspoke. Okay, can we do something fun? Okay. I want to feed you candy on live air. No. <laughs> well, no, because I want to give you candy so you can get some flavor of the jelly beans. I hate jelly beans. Can you try one? Fine. Okay. <laughs> do you guys love our outfits? <laughs> I'm I trying to be shosh. Yeah, I'm do wearing, a fit check. I'm, I'm wearing bloomers, a fur hat, um, a ribbon from Amelia's room that she tells me to stop taking. Hello. Um, and then this little partner beater. <laughs> partner beater. <laughs> I'm of course wearing this fluffy um long sleeve zip up thing that I bought when I lived in LA and was trying to like shop at boutique stores. This is the most ridiculous thing to own. I've never <laughs> felt I've owned it for like four I feel years. Like I can like mow you. You know, like yeah. this year sheep. <laughs> um like you know when you can like um make like a plant and you cut its hair and it's like wheatgrass or something. I feel like that. You feel like wheatgrass? <laughs> I feel like wheatgrass. Okay, can we reframe how you said it? Do you know you get a plant and you can cut its hair? <laughs> it's like a punchline. <laughs> Well, Amelia and I also have amazing news. What is our news? That we're, we're on Vogue's best podcast of 2023 oh, so yeah. far. Yeah, that was huge. This week we were featured in Vogue's best podcast of 2023 so far, which so far. was literally <laughs> on my vision board. Can we talk about that? No, big. Actually, what was on my vision board was being in Vulture's list. Vulture doesn't even know we exist still, but Vogue is Vogue is more um, exciting, interesting. Yeah, Vogue is Chic. actually impressive. Um, I really thought this was funny. Um, people in this town that have never even looked me in the eyes once before are now kind of giving me the time of day. I got so many people that I have been following for like a year following me back. <laughs> <laughs> That's how sick our sick, sick society is. It's like you get one thing in mainstream media and people are like, well, can't count them out. It's like, yeah, <laughs> they're like, we'll give them basic respect now. <laughs> I love it. Life is beautiful. No, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. I've actually never felt more empty. But I can, I'm course. sure that's because I'm getting over like COVID. Totally. I'm like, I'm explaining my symptoms to my mom. She's like, COVID. I'm like, well, I tested negative for COVID. She's like, COVID. It's like, well, okay. My mom thinks she's better than a test. She always has. So <laughs> <laughs> we actually can't fake. talk that much because I know the episode with our guests is going to be so long. I didn't mean a priest at 2.30. <laughs> You're meeting a priest today at 2.30? Yeah, but not anymore, I bet. I've had to cancel one six times. Why are you meeting with a priest? You're Jewish. Um, For that TikTok oh. video. I'm so sure if I'm Evan, a little late. Evan went... got canceled on TikTok because oh, they posted I, I a- I like, canceled, but um, a stern finger wag. About 174 hate <laughs> comments. <laughs> Way more than that. <laughs> <laughs> just every single comment on this video is like speakeasy thrift store and it's kind of being like ironic because i know people would watch a video called speakeasy thrift store and it's kind of just like a church that has a thrift store in it that's like never open but the owner of the church or one of the priests is like thank you so much for posting this we get so much business but every comment is like you're one of the worst americans alive <laughs> <laughs> Like, kill yourself, gentrify your bitch ass hoe. And the priests are like, thank you so much. Please come out every week. We'll give you a discount. I'm like, a discount? Everything's already $10. Yeah, they're like, thank you so much. We've raised so many funds <laughs> to feed our community. Yeah, because all the money goes to the food bank upstairs. It's really so twisted what people are doing. It's so like what happened to Jesus. Okay, and you know, I know we'll talk about this in an episode, but it's like I want to talk about our beach vacation. 
Because okay, Tessa wasn't even will. there, so maybe we... Sh- oh, is she one-on-one, too? So it actually could be fun. No, we'll all connect. So today, we actually have a family on the pod. A friend, foe. I'm like, honestly, I'm a little mad at them right now. And you can keep that in. Okay. Um, they, uh, they were request, they special requested to do this episode. Yeah, and we were. So they better bring it. They better bring it. I'm just like, honestly, the vibe has been off for a little bit in the last few weeks. With you and them? I don't think they feel that way, but I feel that way. Okay, well, we'll confront live on the air, kind of dinner time <laughs> I was thinking style. I was going to do that. Dinner I time was, style. I kind of to do dinner morning style. Um, but we love this girl. Like, She's an duck? absolute star. We should make duck right now. Um, you're gonna love, love, love if you don't already know she her. Zone Learn plate. now and commit it to memory. Follow this bitch on Instagram before it's too late. Uh, we'll be right back with Tessa Bell. What, she goes private. <laughs> <laughs> Follow she this probably bitch will before go she private. goes private, which <laughs> is inevitable. Um, <laughs> she never posts, but it's no problem. It's no problem. Okay, bye. See bye. you in a sec. I'm going to go my iPhone. Welcome back to HBO Girls Rewatch. <laughs> I'm, I'm Amelia. Amelia. <laughs> and I'm Evan. And now we have Tessa the Bell. Bell. Welcome, hey. welcome. Oh my God, please follow her on all social media. She's going to go <laughs> private really soon. So get out there. <laughs> Yeah, please. I, I need it more than anything. Anything. Yeah. We're going to get her to past 2.1K. Yeah. Um, I have, I think, six total photos on my Instagram. They're all really hot. You haven't posted a new one in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> I begged to be on this and Evan was like, you can do season seven. And it's like, well, there's only six seasons. <laughs> So that's amazing. Me and Evan's relationship, it's like, I can't tell if you're my best friend or you're my greatest enemy. I can't tell either. I really, like, I before you got here, it's like, I have no idea how I feel about her today. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. We actually have footage of it. This could be in a podcast. Okay, but let's dive in really quick. Let's do minutes and one Wait, act. this is scary. This is like a test. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, my gig. Wait, the way that. I actually took Adderall before this. Yeah, we can tell. <laughs> well, I, okay, I took my confidence pills before this because I got rejected from the social media project where it's like, um nootropics which are like medicine for your brain like vitamins for your brain uh-huh. is this they, the one i helped you edit i know i put all this time and effort and i literally scammed my ass i uh, i don't have You're time for this i'm kind of just like i went through a lot um i got rejected from a social media role and it's like that is a lot for some people and for me and so i took they, they give you something it's like i get four kinds of pills you got logic confidence energy and brave and i took confidence before wait this. you could be like i'm taking brave i'm taking brave wait i love <laughs> that i'm going crazy off brave right now you can only take one every other day. <laughs> one <pack. laughs> what does it do? It makes like rock hard. Like what does it do? <laughs> Why don't you come find out? Oh God. <laughs> you promised we wouldn't flirt on air. <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go. Three, two, one. Marty's already at the beach house and other three girls are showing up now too. And honey, they're going to town to get to that damn market because Marty says it's time to go get dinner. And you know what? And Hannah can't get her ass into the market because she... It's wearing a bikini. Uh oh! And Elijah and friends are in town too, and they're saying, "Who is that little spring breaker?" And you know who it is, <laughs> Hannah. And Hannah invites Elijah and his gay friends to the beach house because Marnie is being so much. And Hannah's like, this will lighten the mood. And then Marnie is mad because the plans are ruined. They're supposed to really connect as sisters. And then they learn a Broadway style dance. And that's so fun. And then <laughs> Shosh gets a little drunk and starts being really mean. We yeah, shows uh, she speaks TDP truth to power and then tells everyone that they're like really annoying and that they're not actually real friends. And then, um, actually, wait, Jess is like, wait, you're being kind of rude. And then they fight. <laughs> and then the gay guys are also kind of talking at the same time. And then Elijah tells the other gay guy who's smaller that he likes him and loves him. And then he doesn't feel the same way. And then Elijah, like, um, goes to suck his dick or something. Um, and then, oh, they go to sleep. And then they clean up the next morning. And then it's, like, this sad thing where they're all, like, waiting for it to go home. And then they, like, silently do the dance Why together. Why one day long? Boom. <laughs> I know. It should be, should have been two nights. And I'll say this, and this is not on you, Tessa. We have not had one successful minute to win it where we've done it under a minute yet. Okay, well. <laughs> well, also. It's like, it's on us. Yeah, you explain it like well, in a, the most confusing way. Oh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought you were a long-time listener, so I guess thought it would be implied that you would know what the hell's happening. I've never claimed to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spread that rumor. <laughs> Okay, cool. Okay, that was fun. And then now we have a question for you. Sure. Girl. No, it's not. How did you discover girls? Oh. Yeah, where were you when girls came out? 
I didn't mean um, to yell at you like that, but I was getting a little angry. Wait, that's interesting. I feel that's so interesting. I'm like, I feel like I was <laughs> the question we ask every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is a tough one. I never saw that one coming. That's really interesting. Wait, I'm like a girl, so obviously I have to watch that. It's like our yeah, military service of course right. and i'm a girl who's like really annoying all the clocks and- here are set to like zero through 24 <laughs> we're military, military time <laughs> did you say 34 24 oh, okay. um yeah i mean can we guess yeah you can Why guess. guess where you started watching girls venice beach Ooh, here's my guess 3 p.m your twin brother who's fraternal was pissing you to hell off one day and you said i'm going my premium cable account and then you're like, what is this? A girl, a show called Girls? And I'm going to get away from my fraternal male brother for a second and find escape. Well, I was because, again, I did have a fraternal male brother. And so I was Twin. kind of guy's girl because I was like, I just want to be one of the boys. Yeah. How popular were you in high school? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, can we I edit that out? out <laughs> I peaked in elementary school. <laughs> totally. Like, I was cool and people would, like, give me presents, like, $20 bills. This one guy gave me a wedding ring. Oh my god, Ooh. I can totally see you being popular as fuck in fifth grade. Yeah, I was like so nasty and mean. <laughs> Walking around being like, y'all are virgins. <laughs> like four. But then in high in middle school and high school, you I fell off. I kind of was nonverbal and just was like in the library. Which is, honestly, I'm sure Lena was doing something similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I feel like, yeah, I was trying to be kind of one of the boys, so maybe I liked Entourage or something. Yeah. And <laughs> So I actually what? didn't wait. This is embarrassing, but I didn't really watch girls until I was in college. That's okay. That's a very normal story, actually. Okay, okay yeah. You're like you're not alone. You're not alone. But I watched it after college because obviously I was having a mental wait, breakdown. You just changed or during story. college, okay. like after summer. Okay. Perfect. Is this when you were this dating is- that guy for a year and you guys never slept together? <laughs> yeah. So I I like edged with this guy uh-huh. for a true year where we'd hang out every day and I would like sleep in his bed and we never kissed and we'd end every like hang out with like a handshake. It was a penis. With a penis? No, I was literally like so horny, like drippy droopy, and we like never hooked up, never, and it was like a full Were you year of that. Drooling? What's his story? Sorry. <laughs> I'm like he sounds normal to me. <laughs> Wait, That's big for Amelia. <laughs> oh my god, to be a perfect relationship for you, girl. <laughs> no, literally. Well, then I actually dated him for five years. That's the oh story. that guy. That guy. Wait. Totally. And if you're listening, hey, <laughs> what's up? Um, yeah, my mom was like, so he was just nervous. Well, we would, and then we were often long distance, and my mom was like, either he's cheating on you or he's gay or both. You guys <laughs> text the priest. Yeah, text the priest. <laughs> Is this priest somebody you're like kissing? I wish. His name's Father Richie, and I've bailed on him six times. Is he trying to save you? Because, honey, I've tried for years. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> Um, okay, now our best, next best question. Mm-hmm. Girl, what, what girl, girl are, are you? you? I know that one. Girl, what girl are you? We run around the town screaming it. Oh, question, and maybe you guys can answer this too. Amelia and I were thinking of making TikToks where we ask people, "Girl, what girl are you?" Like on the street, In the street. Yeah. NYU style. But people care about that. Yeah, people care about all sorts of boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Actually- just like your shorts <laughs> <laughs> okay so i promised i wouldn't cry on this <laughs> i promised um which girl am i i think mostly hannah because i'm so annoying and think that i have a story to tell definitely and i like to like be naked and show my holes but i'm a little showish because the way i talk doesn't make sense totally. yeah. i've never seen your holes <laughs> just saying um that's like segment three of the book <laughs> I am yeah but then I was thinking I'm like all the girls in the sense that I will ruin my life for a guy that like looks bad and acts bad (laughs) and is even gay (laughs) um like in the episode we were saying this Jessa was like trying to like hook up with a gay guy in the pool and I'm like that it's giving Tessa Bell wait who's he saying (laughs) you're like you look like someone you that would photographer who is the photographer has nothing to do with us. It's like the cobra snake. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's cobra snake. You look like someone cobra snake with photograph. Okay. Wait. Also, guys. And now I'm taking over. But like the battery died, so I don't know what Where got we lost. But I think it's important you know that one of us has gingivitis. <laughs> <laughs> I just whatever you guys do, you need to know that. And it's maybe the one eating candy right now. Oh God! God forbid a woman e- <laughs> eat. <laughs> if a woman eating is a crime, lock me up. 
fuck. No, you wouldn't be locked up. <laughs> like, lock me up and throw away the key. We're like, me to the we're bed. not putting you in jail. And you're like, please. I'm begging. I need the structure. I'm like, maybe I'll finally get some writing done. I have so, okay, I have so many things to say about this episode. Though. Yeah, me too. Okay, okay wait, let's-, let's plug it in. First off, how early did Marnie get to this house to set up before all her friends came? A week? Like, I swear to God, why she, she needs to do so much all prep she did, time. All she did was write four name cards. I mean, and put flowers in every room. Okay, well, she brought those. Okay, but when did she get there? And then also, why are they only there for, like, less than 24 hours? Why are they there for less than 24 hours? And why would she go to the store and just buy duck? Like, where are the chips? I know she had to. I love snacks. I hate when people are like anti snack. And it's like when you're on a beach trip, like you're mostly snack. So for her to be like, no, I'm ju- Julianing. Wait, can I say this though? Like, <laughs> um, wait. First of all, just in general with the show, everyone's like, it's about four dislikable girls, and I'm like. I don't feel that way. I think they're all like really likable and have no flaws. Like I did not understand why everyone hated everyone so much. I'm like just four awesome ladies. They're all being four awesome. awesome independently and then all together are kind of awful. Everybody loves Maybe it's a twist. Everybody loves to be like, I like this show, even though they're yeah. evil and I don't like agree with them. And it's like, okay, they heighten their flaws to make it a good show. Like, do you want a show where a person's kind of fine? Like, Wait, but also like I just don't I remember watching the show and expecting them to like watch Hitler and then it's just girls being <laughs> like Hitler. kind of like ah, oh, like kind of a little annoying and everyone's like I wish I could kill them with a the gun and I'm like I just don't think they're that bad you know, yeah. girls being themselves is one of the worst things in our society and people have never seen that on TV before like my dad's doing his first rewatch and oh you know what he's respecting women in a new way I do think Amazing. he's like People do have it hard at 25. Your dad sounds like really tall. <laughs> that sounds really cool. He's 5'8", but um, our neighbor who is six foot always thought that they were same height because he carries himself really tall. That's really hot. I was reading like reviews of this episode because I'm a good student and um, everyone's like, Marnie is so annoying this episode. And I'm, I'm like, obviously she is, but she really tried to make a good trip. And it's like, oh, God forbid she like put flowers everywhere and make everyone dinner and like try to be sweet. And everyone's so mean. And she if my friend did all that French work, cooking. Literally, literally, I would be like, thank you, girl. And you know what? She got on board when the guys came over. She learned the dance. Like she really tried to like, you know, meet in the middle. She had compromising, like, yeah. No, none of our friends own a cookbook and the girl's cooking from one. I don't know a single person in Santa owns a fucking cookbook and if they do, it's like a weed-oriented cookbook and they've never used it once. And also, like, why are they all swimming while she's hard at work in the kitchen? Like, help your friend cut up a duck And then they're so rude the whole time. They're like, oh, you're being such a buzzkill. And it's like she's being a provider yeah. and, and a mother. I do think she's she should have served turkey burgers. I was thinking that the whole time. I mean, you know, my favorite food is hot dog. Yeah. She should have just grilled up When I dogs. saw you eating a hot dog on Tuesday, it's like, there she goes again. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I know. There, if there's one fact to know about you, it's like, oh, she likes hot dogs. Literally, um, you can get like get me anywhere with a hot dog. Like, put a hot dog in an unmarked van and you have <laughs> me for life. I actually am making a list on my phone of all the best hot dogs at bars in Brooklyn. Wait, really? So we can connect after. I would love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a Google cheat that you can share with the community. Can I tell you? It's so random and no one judged me. The best hot dog I've ever had is outside a Bass Pro Shop. I believe that Rhode more than Island. anything. <laughs> and who like, was like some random guy handed it to you? Like, it was like a sample of a smoker that they had. Which just did, it was a smoker for hot dogs. <laughs> That's inc- I don't need it to be gourmet, by the way. I mean, it was gourmet still. Best Pro Shop can do is serve too. Okay, Melee and I are some of the most privileged people in America because my best friend from high school is dating a professional chef. And uh, my other good friend from high school, I'm... You're not my best friend, but we're really good friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's dating a different professional chef, even though they're best friends of two professional chefs. It's really interesting. I don't <laughs> want to get into that, though. Anyway, they cook dinner for us once a week. And it's a beautiful dinner. And sometimes it's an ample feast. And sometimes um, it's just uh, four chicken. It's four chicken for eight people. My ex-lover, the one who kind of refused to kiss me on the mouth or anywhere else, he used to have these dinner parties like his roommate would cook and then they would always like Venmo me after and then I found out they weren't Venmo requesting everyone it was just like specifically me I'm like that's so mean (laughs) that's so mean it was so crazy everyone's like dinner is so fun and then I was like wait I'm the only one being charged (laughs) is that supper clubs at Yale (laughs) yeah I guess you guys are gonna have to find out I went to Yale (laughs) University but not the first on the podcast Oh, Not the yell you guys Charlie. are thinking about either. No, and it, it, it was just Nepo. It was that's community. why. I didn't know that's how it worked anymore. 
I'm tired. Sometimes I joke where I'm like, yeah, I went to Yale because my dad bought a building. And then people think I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like when a I wear a blonde girl from LA. My dad bought a building. Like, uh, or like when I wear a Yale sweatshirt, people are like, you are so funny, girl. That is such a funny costume. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's mean. kale. They're like, wait, it's subverted. <laughs> yeah. Subverted. They're like, oh, as if. You are so hilarious. Um, We're leaning into Lena. So let's think about the Marnie of it all. She Oh my god, she finally gets a grilled pizza story. Can we talk about that? I know when she Teasing finally explained it. why Charlie broke like how it all went down, my heart actually breaks for her. Wait, but do we believe women? I believe or, her. Or do you think she's oh, it's a real story. like embellishing? I to think get she's sympathy. telling the I truth. I think because Christopher Abbott was being a B I T C H and then they cut him out of the show, we got to yeah, he's being B-I-T-C-H It's so funny that too. he's like, I don't want to seem like a beta on TV. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I seem like such a loser beta cuck. And so I don't want to be on the show. I'm like, oh, literally you're crazy. My God, I'll never get over because last week he did like a um, paper magazine photo shoot. Or like a few weeks ago. Interview. And, some, and I posted like the story of his like shirtless photo to our Instagram. And someone captioned, he's way too ugly to be this boring. <laughs> Wait, why is he? Why does everyone get to be in Paper Magazine? That is so true. Like, and it's never the people you think would I be think there. I think it's interview. It's always like my landlord or something. <laughs> like, one thing I like about wait, first of all, can we talk about the elephant in the room, which is that I recently went to Fire Island. No, oh, we were going to talk oh, about it. Oh yeah, we actually were. So, so this is a beach house episode. <laughs> I did our- not host today. <laughs> um, yeah. So we've all actually recently been to the beach. Okay. So I think we should all. This is actually what I, I want to start with, and then we can all have narrative in our stories. Okay. <laughs> what? Marnie. One of her primary concerns on this trip is taking photos for Instagram totally. to send to the world that there's a message that she's in this fun group yes. and they can take fun trips together. Of course. What is the role of social media playing in your group friend hanging out on Fire Island? And, like, how much was that implemented? Especially Absolutely. because you kind of went with people that were micro, com- like... You guys, they're my friends. They're just regular. <laughs> <laughs> um, micro fame. They're just, like, sure, they're Instagram famous, but, like, they're my friends. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, because I famously was a catfish on Instagram for a long time because I had, like, one photo. And now, um, and people got really mad about that and looked like I was a Russian bot. And now I'm trying to post, like, one photo every, like, four months. Um, being on Fire, Fire Island was really... Why didn't you post from Fire Island? I'm just waiting for, like, the like the film camera to come back. <laughs> Well, it's really fun because also um, when you're the only girl, uh, you get to be like, okay, I'm the prettiest girl in this photo. No competition. Totally. And obviously I went to Fire Island looking to suck dick and hook up because there's a lot of eligible bachelors and it's cool to be like the ratio at this party rocks. (laughs) (laughs) Gay Fire Island. A million gay guys being like, damn, I'm getting going to get it lead tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think everyone took a lot of photos, but then I was also like, as a girl, I was like, I need to respect this space and I'm listening and I'm learning. Mm. So I didn't want to like come in and be like paparazzi for this like space. Right. I was trying to be respectful. But you know, those gay guys kind of turn around and use you as a prop. And honey. You loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved every second of it. <laughs> Um, no, I did feel like I was auditioning. It felt like a huge networking opportunity to be at Fire Island. I was like airdropping like my reels to like every gay guy <laughs> on, on the dock. Um, and I, I feel like I did post a lot on Instagram. I, I, you reposted stories that I knew were going to be huge for your career. Thank you. When, so when one of them went live, I said, this is going to be huge. And I got a, like I got a lot of positive feedback. Um, I bet people were kind of really nice to you. Absolutely. Yeah. On the trip or people to you after the trip? People were kind to me because you have, I I think as a girl, you need to like know your place. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like you do a fun little bit and like you're jiggle re- around and then, the sh- and then leave. This kind of trip, sh- where it's like all the gay men need to learn their Wait, place on this female trip. You're so right. Yeah. Like you're fun, but then it's like there's going to come a point where everyone starts like jacking each other off of a hot tub and it's like that's when I should leave. Totally. <laughs> you go to your little sea cabin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I like hide in the bushes and watch. <laughs> the first day I was there, there was two other girls there and that was really great and I like learned a lot from them totally. but it was great then when they left because there was like no more competition you could just be yourself it was just finally just me and the boys yeah um but it's also because i don't do many drugs 
I'll do drugs to fit in. Like peer pressure really works on me, but I don't really care about them. And it's really hard to stay up for like five nights in a row without drugs. Of course. Of course. You're up. How long were you there for? I think like four days, maybe three to four days. You're there for that long? That's a really long no, time. No, it was like I, I booked and it was a really big deal for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any clothing thoughts you want to say on Fire Island? I didn't get to say a single thing on Fire Island yet. So closing is my opening and my closing, actually. Here we go. Say what you want to say. (laughs) This is the last Because I her oh sorry, my Spotify is open. Um, one of the biggest things on this trip was people were pointing this out to me is that we went in a group, right? Sure. When setting, taking that photo, we took a group photo of 12 people and that was put online. Mm-hmm. The way that ties you to people, even if you're not necessarily so close with them. That is so true because that photo was the shot heard around no, the world. No, it was the shot heard around the world. And I was like, so this is your, these are these your, your closest, closest friends. friends. And you're right? going to an island, a second location. And that's kind of showed, that's like why Marnie wanted to take a photo yeah. on this trip with her three friends. Because it sends a message to the rest of the world that like, this is a friend group and they did something outside of the city. And when you totally. do something outside the city, even if it's just the Hamptons or l- the North you, Fork. When you take a bus to a train to a ferry to, y- to a yeah. walk. But I love, okay, so I love like field trips or, because even when you're young, there's something about being a little bit away from home where everyone acts a little bad. Oh, yeah. it's like it's the parents favorite, are gone. It's just us kids. They buy TV a show. weird snack. Yeah, you buy a weird snack. That's White always when people goldfish. like start kissing. It's yeah. always when, or people get into fights. It's like you're away from home and everyone's like, okay. The like, rules are different completely yeah it's so fun it's so fun well i mean we, we're learning a lot because it's like marnie knows exactly what's going on of course she, she knows there's strains on her relationship with hannah and things have been weird ever since but the hookup social with media she's so right that social media could literally permanently like it can like if you have that photo and you get to look at that online and you're like maybe i did have this amazing time in this trip and this is one of my closest friends in america rose colored glasses rose colored glasses core but it's also just like she is heartbroken like she doesn't have her love life is failure her career career is flopping like really? if there's one thing she could focus on that could be positive and seen as positive by other people female it's, friend group. it's female <laughs> friend group wait can and i be a professor for a second yeah please it's like marnie's all about appearances though like the beds are nice there's flowers she's making fancy food and she wants a picture on instagram but it's all fake because they're not getting along and they're actually not close exactly but she cares more about how things look than how things feel slash are yes am i being a genius or what no, that was very smart no, that's yeah, literally you. her whole thing yeah. but can I, okay so this episode brings up something for me about girls in general which is like this issue of female friendship because I do think it's real that like friendships we break up we get closer whatever but girls has a really bleak view on female friendship no, these people are it not really friends. is I mean the gist of the story is that they hate each other yeah and they like, said they haven't had fun in two years together I'm like but wait, you, and they've got Shoshana's- three seasons left and <laughs> shows like freaks out and speaks truth to power and she also does that the second to last episode of the entire series again where she's like we're not actually friends it's the exact same speech it's the exact same this is foreshadowing and i was an english major okay okay creative yeah (laughs) creative (laughs) (laughs) okay sure not analysis i was i did screenwriting but still (laughs) so you know about script i know about script a little the point is it's like I I think it's sad how there's no female friendships on this show that are like really deep or successful. And maybe I'm wrong, by the way. No, no but it, it is not. like it is like finally we get a show about female friendship, and the moral of the story is that they don't exist. Yeah, and it's bad, and it's fake, and it's all Do performative. Do you feel that way? I'm like, I that is my one issue. Like, I love girls, obviously. I worship Lena Dunham, obviously have critiques as well. Um, <laughs> totally open to feedback on that. But it's like I believe in the power of female friendship, especially like. Queer friendship, chosen family. It's a show about friendship too. At the end of the day, yeah, or but just it's, relationship, it's, right? But it's always failing. I'm like, this is something I love about Sex in the City. It's like they are there for each other, yeah. and friends fight. But it's like they are family. They're not getting brunch every Sunday here. Well, they can't you know even do what? a trip. To the I four mean, of them. I still think they are good friends, even though this episode specifically wasn't I highlighting that. Actually, d- a really disagreed. Girls haven't been in a single scene together. Okay, well, remember when Hannah picked up Jessa from rehab and was like, "I actually really miss you, and I'm glad you're okay." No, I actually think they have a fairly good friendship. I yeah, think that, which like, is so random. I think it's real that you 
come together and come apart. Like, I think sometimes in my life, the people I'm closest with, it's not that I like them the most. It's just, like, they're around. It's, like, we totally. live near each other or, like, we do improv comedy together, God forbid. <laughs> um, and so I do understand where it's, like, you were friends in college and now you're not as close because it's, like, you don't have that link so you're growing apart. But I wish totally. they showed friends, friendships that were really deep and successful because I'm, like, female friendship is all I, I do think, yeah. I feel like Hannah and Jess have a fairly deep friendship. I mm-hmm. feel like theirs is real. I think show. Sh- Sh- Shoshana and Jess. Jess. Right? It's like when Marnie's kind of the common norm. <laughs> about the bedroom. Marnie's not actually friends with any of them. Marnie like, is. Like self-proclaimed not friends with I any of them. I think Marnie struggles with friendship. With, well, she's attachment issues. So I think. I actually have a friend from college who is so Marnie in that it's like, I want this. Like, she genuinely does want to be friends, but she physically doesn't know how. And so she's like, well, I know what it's supposed to look like. So if I make the image, maybe I can make the real thing. So she's like curating it, sure. And she is only caring about appearances, but she thinks it's like, if I can appear like that, then it must become real. Like, I think she's really coming from a place of like wanting to actually really connect with these girls, but not knowing how, but being like, well, if I plan this and I plan this, yeah. like the fact that she's like, I thought we could talk and connect at dinner. It's like, she really wants to be like trying to be a girl, but she doesn't know also, how. So friend groups are not a real thing. Well, friend groups are of course toxic. Like no, when someone has an really adult toxic. friend group, I'm like, um, no, I'm in a gay guy group friend group right now. Yeah. It's 12 people or 10 people in this group chat. And it's like, I'm and I with, hang out at all the events and, they and go Char- to. <laughs> and past guests at the pod said Amelia can't be in the group chat. They said not until I get on tea. Well, uh, do the work or don't. Do the-, <laughs> the work starts at home. So another thing that really annoys me about the show is when people are like, the best characters are Adam and Ray. And I'm like, that's so awesome that you watch the show girls and your favorite characters are the boys. That's so <laughs> epic sauce. Like it is so fucked up. It's like the Barbie movie and everybody being like, I'm going to make a TikTok about the Ken song. Who cares about all the girl plot lines? This It's so, un- well, Barbie. Uh, also the way that Barbie was about Ken. Barbie was literally a vehicle for Ryan Gosling. And it like the boys got the fight scene. They got to dance. They got to sing. They got to be funny. And then Margaret Robbie got to cry for two hours. <laughs> And I'm like, that's not feminism. And then, like, help Ken figure himself out. Well, I'm this like, is why Lena's getting to Polly movie and it's going to turn everything around. I hope, like, Polly is, like, has disordered She eating. didn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> Polly, Pocky doesn't really have a boyfriend. And we have to remember that. I also, it's like, I can't, I was so confused. I assumed the Barbie movie would be gay. Because she keeps being like, I don't need Ken. And I'm like, okay, perfect. She's going to have, like, a scissoring scene with the Barbies. And then it I never happened. I don't think happened. they let her do anything. I think they were like Greta. But also the thing about Greta Gerwig is she will make the queerest movie that's straight. Of course. Like, France is hot. It's like, so you're not going to kiss your friend? Like, it's so... I'm, it's I literally need, like, mm. grow up and kiss your friend. Like, that was crazy. Oh, this is what I was going to say is um, about, like, friend groups falling apart and coming together. I feel like I love to date my friends because mm. it's really high stakes. Um, and it is really fun because when it's over, everything is destroyed. And it's not just for you, but for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah I've like, seen that every day. Totally. It's classic Gilmore Girls, Luke Lorelai, blue and pink ribbon style. So if Absolutely. I break up, you're, I'm going to have to come to you. Well, no, because I'm going to choose your boyfriend's side. <laughs> no. I'm- you should. That's the right choice. <laughs> no, because I had like a friend group when I moved to New York. And then they were all like my ex's friends. And then now we don't hang out at all because they all hang out at his house. And they're kind of like, we hang out at his house, so see ya. But you're playing Xbox. You don't need to be there. That's true. I feel like so many bad things happen to you. Thank you for saying that. I think things that happen to most people happen to you. And then you make them bad. (laughs) That's not true. I'm kidding. Evan. Wait, who I'm was kidding, the person? And I'm quoting somebody and I don't know who it is. That was it was like Taylor Swift no, is either right. like I'm a hero or I'm a victim, and I feel that way about myself. Well, yeah, like, yeah. Of course, the two genders are hero and victim. <laughs> I, I feel that that's me at different moments. <laughs> she was giving hero, I was giving victim. No, wait, what? What? You're definitely giving villain. <laughs> villain. I- um, but enough about Marnie. <laughs> okay. Do you guys think that? Um, why do you think shows? Uh, and by the way, this is like now my podcast. Yeah. Why do you think over. shows reached like a breaking point in this episode? Because so, she's finally around everyone. It's like she just like hasn't had a time. It's like she's yeah. drunk and Here's she's the around thing people. About shows is she is very aware and not holding it in. Like we see in the last episode, she's like fucking that guy, and the whole time they're fucking, she's like mm-hmm. analyzing him and breaking him down and reading him like how she fits into his life. So I feel like shows is just naturally like describing what. She 
she sing in real time with reckless abandon, but she never gets the opportunity to be heard. And she mentions that in this. It's like she's drunk enough to be mm. like, I'm actually gonna speak up and say all of you fucking <laughs> suck. Cause she's like observer. Cause she's like younger than them and a little removed because she's in college so she's able to kind of see what they can because everyone thinks show she's like a dumb bimbo because she talks stupid but she's also really smart she's always picking up on like the dynamics like she does at the end of the show too so shauna's on her soapbox and you know what she's kind of giving the best reads possible like yeah jessa went to rehab for five minutes and now we have to listen to all her bullshit people get a little bit smarter and we when have Marnie to is her. so but her i'm like show she was just saying the obvious like you can't be that offended by that okay the, sh- the thing about Jess and rehab, I feel like I did therapy for one week and then I was suddenly like, it's important to do the work. And so many people <laughs> are like not working on themselves and then complaining. And it's like, I've been in therapy for one day. No, literally. <laughs> I'm the same way. I only say it because I mean it. No, 100%. I'm like, I do the same shit. That's how I feel that I like wrote one page Have you script. read a book before? It's like, I'm going to tell everyone about it. A hundred percent. Yeah. I learned one lesson. It's going to make everyone else's business. Or when you're like, I read an article and really you saw a video. That was yeah, yeah. Exactly. a podcast clip. You saw someone say almost a sentence. And it's like, <laughs> so I've actually been on shadow work TikTok and I've learned a lot. <laughs> Oh my god, not shadow work. It's all my TikTok. My is. whole thing is sponsoring the shadow work journal, and it's like all I do is think about the past. <laughs> my algorithm is always French teens in the psych ward being like, 10 things you can't bring to the psych ward. <laughs> like, why is this my why is this my target? I just want to talk about all the gay men in this episode. Oh, wait, this make- brings up an amazing yeah. point, too. One, there's a gorgeous alliance between girl and gay, of course. And again, thank you to my sponsors for letting me come to Fire Island, and I would love to come next year. But two, gay guys can totally hate women and be misogynist and that was really on display all this episode all the gay men were evil from the start yes. from being like look at spring breaker over here and it's like first of all doyle go away doyle, doyle. Literally, literally i was like go find paris bitch <laughs> <laughs> he's so guy. annoying he's when did he get to play gay what? is he even gay i don't know but his name is pal and he's like and gay the, and then the other guy's name is paul no. and then it's gerard that like him no him playing gay i was like this is breaking the fourth wall the, i hate sometimes the way gay men can talk about women's bodies like when they're like pussy is so gross and then they start gagging and it's like i'm not binary <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying first of all it's like there are also men with pussies wake up wake up Whoa. like what? literally and then also it's like you don't have to say you don't have to want to fuck me but that doesn't mean my body is disgusting. I'm not like going around being like, penises are so gross. Like, that's Literally. so annoying. They, the boys come over. Yeah. And Marnie is like, oh, fine, we'll make it work. But I only bought four ducks. It's like, you were at the pantry already. Like, just buy some more. Well, she didn't think they were coming over for dinner. Right. She thought they were going to leave. I mean, but this woman has nothing in her house. She gets ground together. There's no frozen turkey burgers in the freezer. I know. When they're like, let's order Domino's. And they're like, not in this town. Also, there is a Domino's. I looked it up. Wait, there's is one there? Domino's in the North in Fire Fork. Island, there was like no food. No, there's only a Pines Pantry where those poor girls have to work. I know. It's always just like, why? I'm like, okay, this is an island full of gay men. And for some reason, there's these like 14 year old girls running all the restaurants. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently, it used to be guys and there was drama and they had to like redo the whole thing. Hi, yeah, and hire they had all to outsource women. all high school students that are not in the same friend group. Yeah. And they're like, we're getting credit for this. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I do think girls stand the test of time, but do you think. It speaks to this generation, I guess. Yeah, you guys have people listening to your podcast. It speaks more to this generation sometimes even than the millennials. Yeah, Evan made the argument that like millennials and why the show is hated by so many is because a lot of people that watched it when it came out are less individualistic than us. Yeah. But Gen Z itself is so much more like these girls because they're so focused on themselves and we as a generation have been so focused on ourselves. I feel like I have this sickness where sometimes I care more about somebody being interesting than being nice. And that's yeah, why I'm I friends agree. with kind of like, it's a, honey, it's a circus. Totally. Everyone is absolutely I know. Well, I would a much freak rather of the be week. friends with someone who's evil and interesting totally. than someone who's like normal and nice because I'm because they're boring. Because they're boring. I'm like, I can't even have a conversation with you though. That's a price to pay for us. Like sit, we just sit in silence. I want to go to the bar and have somebody say something crazy. No, a hundred percent. But then I'm like, um, is that why like every moment is torture? Should we care about being nice? We actually are really nice. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Sorry, I'm. I don't mean to be popping off, but this is another thing I hate when people write about Gen Z, where they treat us like we're mean, and we're actually like not. Like in Barbie, when the girls see Barbie and they're like, 
like, hey, you're a fascist and we hate you. I'm like, that would never happen. If Barbie walked into school, they'd all be like, mother, mama, chica, slay. <laughs> they'd literally be like, your outfit is so cute. They would 100% I think millennials do that. are meaner than Gen Z. We're not really that. Like, the we thing might be is, I think Gen but we're not Z is mean. way less judgmental of people's yeah. like self-expression, like way more accepting of like a different idea of like se- what like, normal could be. Yeah, like what yeah. normal could be. I agree with that. So it's like, yeah in that sense that's why more people want to be comedians now or be online and have a presence because it's like it is just more acceptable but at some point it's like we can't all be comedians somebody's gonna need to like well, build a railroad we no have- so here's the thing <laughs> there are, i mean have ai for that like here's we're moving thing. in a way we're where it's becoming it's the way like somebody has to like make this whatever and it's like actually the industrial revolution it's like we're like now that there's AI. Wait, sorry, I'm, I'm like you're literally no, no. like wearing glasses in a tweed suit. I'm like, whoa. I'm sorry, but the future, the, the future of the economy is not sending emails. It's being creative because the one thing that robots can't do and the one thing <gasps> AI can't do is creativity. No, it's so true. you're thinking like everybody can't have a creative job, and it's like in the future everybody has to because it's the only thing we haven't figured out how to automate. No, I just got full body sh- now, shivers, and I'm gonna vote for you for every president. Every single Excel, every single PowerPoint we make, we're gonna be able to just like type it into a fucking like we just write it little summary of the PowerPoint one and we'll make every single thing. We'll have all the data. Literally, like, like only, the only thing that's different are having podcasts. The only thing that'll separate us from AI is yeah, podcasts. Yeah. The only thing that sets us apart from the robots <laughs> is stand-up comedy. That's I'm all we saying, have. like, doctors don't need to know, go to school anymore. We have the internet. Like, lawyers don't need to learn the law. Like, we have the internet. Like, it's literally, like, all the things we think we need. It's like, you don't need to be an engineer. We have coders. But, like, a robot can't, like, tweet about, like, pussy and bush like, literally nobody can be exactly. or old donald tweeting for mcdonald's <laughs> that's so funny AI doesn't get memes so being a meme connoisseur is what the future is and it's a valid thing to pursue it really i always i've been told this Sorry, we've been by people yelling. that have been working in ai for years they were telling me that my skill set is terrible for right now but will be really great in next 10 to 20 years so you're saying that <laughs> Society, like, we're going to have, like, no more chefs and no more construction workers and we're all going to be No, podcasters. no, we're going to have all that. No, the I things think- you construct, I think, first off, we have to redefine what creativity looks like because creativity can literally be found in every single Don't substance on Don't you dare talk Earth. to me like that. I'm just saying. <laughs> My dad is a construction worker. <laughs> What, I came owns? from nothing. <laughs> That's not true at all. No, but when he built the building school, at Yale. Okay. First of all, it's complicated. <laughs> and second of all, my dad does work in construction. He owns a construction company. He built it from the ground up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun because it's a metaphor, but also true. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait. We have to focus on girls. <laughs> I know. Okay, so enough about the creator We're, economy, but... Okay. Okay, I have a few things I want to talk about. First sure. off, gate. Okay, I know we were shitting. Okay, first off, let's talk about we'll do gay for five more seconds because yes, a BFA you spent eighty k on it oh, doesn't mean so you'll funny. be talent. Fine. Of course you're talented. Of course you're talented, but everyone's talented. That's a real. That's st- the thing about BFA is like everybody's good at tap dancing now. This was something that really made. I used to um watch like YouTube compilations of like. 14 year old singing beautifully and it would really start crying because I'm like we're all screwed like everyone is so <laughs> talented and like what are we gonna do it is so stressful as a kid because it's also like you don't know how big the world is and it's like your high school is the world and so it's like okay well if I can be the best at this then I'm gonna be fine but then you go to college with like I think about this for people who like go to musical theater it's like they were the lead in their high school whatever and then they get to college and it's Michigan and everybody is perfect and better so it's like and there's only so many Broadway theaters. No, literally the only reason I do comedy is because I didn't get into an acapella group. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Musical theater is a sickness and there's no cure. Um, and I wish, I always am like, oh, I would rather do this than comedy, of course. What do you think when that got the gay guys like, we get in here. She's just like Sadie. Oh, Sadie never showers. She showers once a month. Oh you my love God. her. Oh, Sadie's <laughs> fat as shit. That's so probably pulling from real life of like Lena Dunham always being compared to like a monster. <laughs> I feel like I anytime somebody's like, oh my God, you remind me of this person. It's, it's always the thing. meanest thing it's ever. So mean. It's never once somebody's like, you say that and then you're like, I feel amazing. Thanks for saying that. That's awesome. It's never good. It's never good. It's never positive. People are always like, you remind me of this evil, mean hag. And I'm like, okay. I get constantly compared to a different brunette celebrity every single day. It doesn't matter ugly or not. I'm getting compared just because I, what, have a bigger nose than usual? I'm totally like, like Adam Driver. I don't look like Adam Driver. You don't. But also Adam Driver's like, can get it. 
I know, but the thing is, it's like they don't mean it like that. What else happens? The Elijah telling Doyle he loves him and Doyle being like, I'm not going to give you that. And also your friend is stupid and gross and I hate I her. And dance. Elijah's like, no problem. I'll yeah. suck your dick right now. <laughs> classic like that is word being for 20. word i've said that that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so what 25 is about lena went there also i'm glad elijah's been back <laughs> i love lena went there yeah she keeps it so real that <laughs> girl i mean this episode is so real because it's like you are gonna date a guy like all this that. shit happens i really have like spent time with so many guys who like hated my guts i'm sorry no other tv you. show are they like are they like, talking about things that, that actually happen to people I'm like, every show is like about like a family that's like a little disenfranchised. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. But this shit, I kind of, I'm like, you're talking about a 25 year old girl who like has to jerk her kidney stone out of a penis. That happens. <laughs> that's so funny. Like, every other show is like about police brutality. And instead, this is about jerking a tiny stone out of a dick, and that's real. I think those little stories it is matter true about just this as much. Show. Totally. It is true because it's like this is happening to real people. Going to a beach house, they're not talking about that in other shows. Like people getting angry on a trip. It's and like, it's like it happens all the time. time. Finally, Lena talked about it. And talked and when they are picking up the, when they're putting away the glasses the next day after the huge fight that's the night before so it's like, real. that is what happens in your life when you like oh i love when you um all like hang out deep into the night and then you wake up and all clean up in the morning like silently i love that feeling and you're all like hung over and a little groggy and oh you're, like, i love that feeling down the sink literally well, i think it's a real thing it's like before you go on a trip i mean it depends i, I i've definitely experienced this before but it's like a group of people you're not necessarily feeling the closest with but you're being forced to have this intimate time with them yeah and it build up to that like hannah's being like i've been re- i didn't want to go on this trip for so long but i'm glad i'm here i'm glad it's happening it's like we've all experienced that like if it's just like the college house we lived in or it's like you're getting ready for the school you're starting like do i actually care about these people in the same way i thought i did totally. or it's like it is the actual trip or the essence or just like getting dinner with someone that you haven't seen in a few months and then you're kind of like wait this was really great and powerful experience and then it goes sour all over again it's like Okay, thank God that story is being told. Oh my God, we well, never should be sweet, sour, sweet. Oh my sour, God, sour, sweet, gone. I know. I'm like, I, I makes me happy that like no, I. No, it does. Be, and I, this is so funny for you to be like, <laughs> for you to be like, I'm sick of seeing the opioid crisis. I want to see people hook up on an island. <laughs> No, because all those shows based on reality never talk about this. I'm sorry. They're on Love Island, they're not having like sit like constant. Yeah, like, can't the can the girls connect? Can they do something fun? Like that's always off camera when they're in the hot tub. There's late at no night. tension in the same way in reality TV that we have in this show. I mean, of course it's scripted, but like that tension feels more real to me than I've ever seen on Love Island. I agree with you. It feels more human. And I in just, a way that the reality TV ever does, The Bachelor, it's because there's not like actual relationships. These people don't know each other. Like she's actually writing stories about people that like potentially know each other. Totally. You keep comparing it to reality TV, which I'm addicted to. <laughs> no, it feels like reality TV. This show. <laughs> I think like I do. I've re- always thought that. I do really feel like going on a trip. I'm always like, this is gonna change it all and save me for myself. Like when we all went upstate. Yeah. Um, my house. Well, <laughs> that was huge and it did change it all. To the listeners, there was a period in my flop era when I was experiencing hashtag mental illness. And so we went to Evan's childhood home because I thought it would make it better. And then I cried on the street and a stranger asked if I needed to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> did it happen to you again? Well, she came back later and was like, you're still not in the ER? <laughs> Come with me. No, I meant like we were literally at an open mic or something. Someone's like, are you okay? A lot of times in public, people ask me if I'm okay. And I'm like, I'm actually like doing amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is me at my best. <laughs> oh my God. I think um, that was a perfect trip. It was actually you really You were like, nice. let's go on a hike. And everybody was like, no. And then, and then we had our shared birthday party. Oh, I liked when we all, I really like when everyone is in one bed, when all my friends are in one giant bed. And it's bed. easy at Evan's house because they have a king size bed. That's the biggest bed I've ever been in my life. For what reason? <laughs> I'm like, I don't move when I sleep. Your mom is like Tad and Laureen. She loves you. What do you think about like you guys platonic cuddle? Totally. I try. Sorry. I'm not like an aggra- You always cuddle you me back. Push away? No, it's. It's I, really fun to cuddle. I know. What is that? I don't... I've actually never experienced such an intimate friendship in my life. Oh, my gosh. Aww. Since the fifth grade. I feel that... Well, I came from a broken home. Um, so I feel I was weird about touch growing up. And now I'm like, I can't get enough of this stuff. 
Yeah, I understand that. I'm so, like, very, like, reactive, like, literally ticklish if somebody tries to touch me. Um, but I'm growing and I'm learning and I'm healing well, from never being I'm held. Like, it's, you experience negative touch and you're like, okay, well, then when does it get positive? <laughs> <laughs> totally. I think it's so cute to, like, like cuddle with your friends. Like, Elijah and Hannah are always, like, stroking each other. I, just, I, I think know. non-consensual cuddling happens actually a lot and it can make you feel really uncomfortable okay absolutely i would never okay, promote non-consensual cuddling i'm just saying you're like doing gotcha journalism where you're like i actually think this is a huge problem and i'm like i would never promote that it's just nothing because it doesn't seem that intimate but it can I, be actually really hurt you yeah okay. i'm talking from personal experience because i am the girl who's like i oh, sorry i'm a <laughs> hugger but i need to ask people's permission before i just like touch their bodies you totally. can't just be like go up to somebody and oh wait this reminds me okay so one time i okay i was in a secret society whatever everyone is at yale it's like you did you you jump with an umbrella no i'm not i'm not allowed to say that i love i heard they were all terrible um, people mention yale or connecticut and i have to be like gilmore girl (laughs) like it's like nobody wants that like don't say don't say gilmore girl (laughs) but oh my god i ghost the priest (laughs) we went to like we had like an initiation night and we had too many people in the house and it was like an Airbnb and they were actually watching us on the cameras. And so they got really mad at us and like came Ugh. and um, I was trying to calm them down because I'm like, guys, I got this. Totally. And I was talking to the husband and I was like, I'm so sorry. And I touched him and the wife was like, don't touch my husband, you fucking whore. And I was like, I've learned a powerful lesson today. <laughs> oh my god. Isn't that so fascinating? You will never forget that. I'll never forget that in my um, life. I, l- I can totally see you like doing damage control and then them shooting you with I was gun. trying to do PR where I was like and of course I made it so much worse because then she thought I was trying to be a homewrecker. Yeah. And like, kiss her husband. <laughs> That's actually perfect. <laughs> yeah, it was so scary. And then the cops came, but then me and the cop had the same birthday. So I was trying to be like, oh, twins. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sister life. Yeah, I'm like, wait, that is so crazy. Wait, that's like when the cop came up to you. At our shared birthday party? No, um, upstate the day before when you they tried to give you a ticket and you're like, you can't ticket me. I don't have my license. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you're ticketing me, but I'm actually drunk driving. <laughs> so that's pretty silly. So you can't get me today. <laughs> they couldn't ticket at me because the system is so slow and I didn't have my license so they couldn't put it in. So I drove through a red light. Or I go through a stop sign, but I basically stopped. You basically and there's no cars that come the I other way. I basically stopped. It's you were- airtight defense in court. <laughs> no, I here's basically the thing. Stopped. It's like they were trying to pull over because they thought the police was trying to capture someone in front of us. <laughs> and so they ran a stop sign for the police. And then the police was like, you ran a stop sign. And it was like, yeah, I was getting out of your way. Like, I did this for you. I was trying to pull over for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's evil, the things. And then, oh, yeah, yeah. like, it was Leva and Charlie with Duncan showing up being like, sorry. That was so crazy where I was like, okay, I'll just be at the house while you guys, like, quickly pick up our friends. <laughs> and immediately you're like, so we got pulled over by the cops. We're running jail. We're like, can you pull out the loaf? <laughs> I made a lemon loaf. This is happening several times. We'll be at somebody's house and they're like, I'm have to go. And then they're just leaving me with, like, uh, seven pies in the office. <laughs> Can you um, (laughs) marinate the ribs? (laughs) I do feel scared that I'm... Well, you know, famously, a lot of men have told me I'm not wife material. Um, Who's saying that to you? Pepper, and you'll show them. I know. People always say I'm not wife material. Why? And again, it's like, oh, no, I don't get to, like, marry an improviser. My life sucks. Yeah. But, like... Um, I don't really know how to cook very well. Do you think I should learn that? No, it's fine. Oh my god, do you hear that sound? Do you hear that sound? Oh god, what is that? <laughs> it's it's quarter quarter o'clock. o'clock. <laughs> now this is a segment where we just kind of say our favorite lines from the episode. I know you took some notes, so do you have any favorites you'd like to Wait, share? I'm sorry, I know that like I should answer the question, but it's so funny because you guys will do the segment to be like, hello, hello, are you ready for quote o'clock? And then immediately lose steam. <laughs> And immediately, like, the light drains from your eyes and you're, like, dead-eyed <laughs> from the rest. Okay, Martin, we're kind of now showing up to the beach and people, and we're like, we're in the Hamptons. And we're like, no, actually, this is a North Fork. It's for people that don't want to be near J.Crew. And it's just trying to say, J.Crew? That's so one. funny. Also, so relatable. Whenever I go to your house, that is four miles north of the city. And I'm like, upstate. And your mom is like, it's not upstate. <laughs> <laughs> 
You want me to do more quotes? Okay. I have a quote. So, I, I like, think Spring Breakers is an amazing uh, film. <laughs> like, did That's, you see uh, someone talking over a woman? How easy it was? All the comments are like, they won't let a woman talk. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. For, I actually was literally going to say that quote. Spring Breakers. The blend of art and commerce. It's so the funny. Blend so of art. true. It is. Because you watch the film and you're like, this is the blend of art and Wait, commerce. Wait, I just watched that film on my iPhone. And I was like, this Your film is touch. actually porn. It's yeah. literally just a bunch of girls in bikinis that were Disney Channel stars, like, jumping up and down, holding a gun. I had no idea that's I, what the movie was. I tried to watch it in high school and literally got scared and had to cut it. I haven't seen it since. I literally got afraid and it was, I was still kind of religious. And it made, like, $200 billion. Literally. And it, it's the same thing with, Isn't like, a is like, first Sam, big film. Sam Levison, like, um... Being like, oh, I had a, like, I followed this porn star and then I was like, I need to hire her. That's what it felt like the movie was about. It's like, I found a Disney star and I was like, I'm going to make you do porn. <laughs> it is so funny where they're like, okay, let's put a girl in a bikini and then give her a gun. And then it's like the best, like highest grossing film of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get what this town wants. I know what sells. No, it sells sex and guns, art and commerce. It's perfect. Yes. I guess the commerce is guns. Yeah. We okay. A line that absolutely killed me was when they were fighting over the room, and Hannah goes, "Hey guys, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna take this room." <laughs> yeah. it's like, they're like, no "I want this room. I this room." And she's like, "Hey, we don't have to fight. I got it." <laughs> it's so how you like um, redirect things to get what you want in like a casual and friendly way. Manipulation. Yeah, you manipulate. What is the word for that? <laughs> toxic. When you, when you manipulate. In me in a toxic way it's funny <laughs> it's funny like Hannah well am I really a terrible person no and no. I love both of you and I want to go on the record because I, I know that <laughs> I've been you know razzing you guys but I love both of you maybe that is right too. I can take a joke more I know, than the Amelia. way I didn't say it back <laughs> that was crazy I was thinking about myself of course can you believe in Tessa yeah, of course. You're like the only girl in this town I really believe well, thank in. Thank you so much. I, and I believe you when you say that. Evan, your voice went up like 20 octaves. I know, because you know, I, I was supposed to confront you this episode. Well, about what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Evan's been feeling weird about y'all's relationship the past week specifically. <laughs> this week? The, no, for this podcast. What do you wait? Let's air no, it out. No, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, I, it's because I've been bad at responding to text messages. It's, okay. it's like, you know, I'm neurodivergent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I literally am like living out of a suitcase right now. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't tell them. I want the listeners to think I'm rich. <laughs> Money means nothing to me, actually. Um, I can't go in the open water unless I'm menstruating. I think we already said that one. Iconic. That one's Jessica. epic. I'm already trying to get everyone in the water being like, no, this is the best weather conditions. This is the best ocean conditions possible. <laughs> She's like, like the smashing best time <laughs> There's giant boulders I, on that beach. I really, not to get like techie, I'm like, how did you get good quality sound HBO mm. on this beach? <gasps> like the way I'm like, where are the wind? Like, <sighs> I think I believe too much in CGI because everything I'm like, well, that's just CGI. <laughs> <laughs> that's CGI. It's like, oh, it was ADR. It was ADR. <laughs> the whole episode was ADR. We edited that in post. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to put my knee down? No, it's okay. Um, um, <laughs> in that same scene, well, Marnie is like, and prove to everyone via Instagram that we can still have fun as a group. I know, which again, one of us important nauseam, quotes. But... And, well, I mean, I do think it's like, A, the beaches in the Hamptons are a lot nicer than the North Fork. That's <laughs> all rocks. And then the Hamptons has gorgeous, big, wide beaches. Fire Island, too, where you can just sprawl out and have fun. So it's like, I guess, like, I get why people aren't actually going to North Fork. The beaches suck there. There's a little pebbles. Ow. I know I, I I want beach to be sand. I want beach to be big sand. I don't I think I could build a life in the rocks and be okay with that. Can I dox Beautiful. myself? Absolutely. Okay, so my prom date from high school, um, her dad's really rich and then he got even richer because he bought Bitcoin in 2014. Um, so they have a really nice house in Hampton and it's right on the water. Oh my god. And you kinda like I'm like every time I get to go there, I feel one of the most special people in America. Um, <laughs> every again, time Evan house, goes to the Hamptons for the weekend, I binge eat and watch Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> it's to self soothe. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is the most gorgeous house you've ever seen. But then you get to step off the house in, onto the beach. Because all her neighbors are like billionaires that started Facebook basically, but not Zuck, Dark, Dark, Mark Zuckerberg, but the Sweet twins job. instead. Um, no, those twins. This the the yeah. Andrew Hammer. Andrew. Andrew, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> no, like those twins. The ones no, that I know. Army Hammer plays. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. Those are her neighbors. <laughs> And then it's like you go out on the beach, and it's like no the one's Winkle there. The Winklevoss twins. The Winklevoss twins. Sorry, twins are important to me. No, twins are important My to you. Community. 
identical to. Um, but it's like that. It's just like so magical. And then I, if I had to go to that little pebble beach and like, okay, you know what? It is gorgeous too. I know. Cut I'm like, all that. I wouldn't want a huge beach house. <laughs> I guess it's like, you know what? <laughs> I, I'd take that for sure. Oh my God, their pool looks so nice. Wait, can when I say this? The gate, they had so much fun at the pool. I don't own a bathing suit because nothing will fit my giant porn star tits. I believe you. And I've I know that everyone, in gets, an, everyone gets annoyed. Is when, that my dream? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you in a swimsuit though. Yeah. When we no, went babe. To the neighbor that's pool. CGI. No, that, that was, was must CG. have been CGI. I was in oh, Evan's wait, mom's yeah. swimsuit, like holding my tits. <laughs> and you're like in a perfectly form fitted tailored suit. Oh, yeah. I wanted your brother to care about me. I kept like walking past him in my He's swimsuit. doing terrible. <laughs> your brother being like, Tess is the most mentally ill person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, the way your brother was just like, why are all your friends sad? He's sadder than all of us. He's so shosh though, and that it's like, why would I want to be mentally ill? That was so I good. Know. Like that he was the, so he got good. To choose. That's like one of the most perfect quotes for that whole thing. Cause she the way it shows she's like, I have no interest in y'all's entire lore. Like I wanna be happy in Manhattan working and marketing like a normal individual. This always happens to me where it's like when I see somebody post a picture of their family, I'm like, I'm so sad, like you gave up on your dreams. And it's like, no, you have a family and kids in a house, and you have a really happy life. Like literally in our sick heads, we're like, oh my god, they live in their hometown near their family and have a beautiful kid and a loving husband. I'm like filled with with pity I'm yeah. like, I'm like, every girl from my high school oh. is like happily married right now in a beautiful home in texas oh my god my heart breaks it, it's literally like i don't want money for a wedding i want money for a short film yeah of course. <laughs> about a wedding yeah <laughs> honey about a wedding dad will you pay for my short film if i go to south by <laughs> to be like shopping for wedding dresses for of course the short film yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you plan a wedding just because you like i actually have a script idea wait this I mean, is I've like how i want to I'm okay. No one steal this, but I, I'm thinking of the script that involves plastic surgery, and I'm like, I guess I should get some plastic surgery just to, you know as research. Just so you know, you could write it off. Actually, that's so you smart. You could write yeah. it off. Maybe it's a documentary about you getting plastic surgery <laughs> and being a comedian. Okay, you guys are like my business team. Yeah, of course. I've always said that. <laughs> we, uh, you forced us to be. <laughs> um, okay. Another quote I love. Oh, I can't get over the, the Daffy Duck Donald Duck. Oh, my God. Do the Daffy Duck. Do the Daffy Duck. That's Donald Duck. Well, it's Marnie's Duck. Marnie's pissed. Marnie's pissed. Sorry. <laughs> my brain is so Oh, wait, bad like when right the meals now. is small and they're like, uh, is this a lean cuisine? <laughs> are we in the zone method? <laughs> I love when they're trying to dunk on Marnie when she's already so when she's like tr- downtrodden. She literally spent all, all day meal. in the kitchen. Yeah. That was where I'm like, you guys are disrespectful. Yeah, I was like, you guys are just being mean right Tastes now. Tastes like a used condom. This is what I mean where I'm like, none of them are people pleasers because I would have like been absolutely starving and I would have been like, this was awesome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. This is so yum yum. I'm like, so tasty. I love that. I've literally eaten stuff that I'm allergic to because I'm like, <laughs> so desperate to fit in okay well maybe don't stop doing that one or the time when i i really had the crush on this boy and he was like i'm going to get a flu shot and i already got mine but i really want to hang out with him so i was just like let's run it back i guess <laughs> <laughs> and it's got another flu shot <laughs> did that really hurt you i don't know i'm sorry, I okay you're not supposed fine. to do that this was before covid so like really? um it wasn't like a supply issue if you guys are yeah, mad about that no, no. it's more of like you're doing the you're putting the virus back in your body no again. absolutely absolutely <laughs> oh okay when um when andrew ran when elijah's like what are you doing here and she's like getting away from the hustle and bustle of city life and my and it, like exhausting job in the magazine industry i love what are you and doing making memories here to last forever but they kind of turned it was so cute because it's like Hannah is so mad at Elijah for stalling. She's holding totally resentment. And it's like, he can't say mad at her best friend for that Well, long. they actually have a really cute friendship. Yeah, There's really this do. really deep And literally, here. Hannah's like, this guy is treating you poorly. Like, y- you deserve better. And he's like, okay, yeah. And then immediately, like, lets the guy be like, your friend's stupid. I know. Well, I love defending a himbo slash bimbo. Totally. Obviously, that means a lot to me. Yeah. I think it's so people who are like, you use the word wrong. I'm like, you're the most boring type of person in the entire <laughs> world. I used to do grammar wrong a lot in college, and I'd be like, actually, I'm like exploding the form and using it for comedic effect, but I actually just don't understand grammar <laughs> rules. <laughs> I mean, it's also just like They're the, made in, up. the English language make it is up? literally made up, and they make up new words every day. It's, it is actually anti woman and homophobic because we're doing really interesting things with language, and then when you try to police that, yeah, it's, it's like you're. Podcast. Cast. being oppressive about this one way we're supposed to talk i'm like okay this is actually empirical 
<laughs> and by the way, this is empirical. <laughs> oh my God. I Wait, heard it all. It, okay, keep going, keep going. Well, you know, I'm just really thinking about Elijah in this episode because I, I think I really care about him. Me too, even He's though we called star. Marnie a mean, skinny Miss Hannigan. Oh my God, Miss Tanlegs. When's this gentleman called <laughs> Marnie Miss Tanlegs? <laughs> Funniest insults I've Wait, what happens to Marnie and Elijah? Do they become friends? They like talk. Uh, Marnie the is. Pizza, when, I think the whole pizza story kind of like is like they're friends again. Well, that's like actually so heartbreaking. If somebody. Oh, is wait. Did you say Elijah and Marnie? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm sorry. My if, brain is fogged. If somebody like said, I'm going to propose to you and then dumps you, that would ruin me for the rest of my entire one yeah. life. Yeah, she's right that yeah. crazy. You know what? She's you would move to Chinatown too. She's always it. trauma j- dumping on Elijah and Elijah's usually zoning out and not caring. <laughs> but in this episode, he's like, that does sound hard and I'm I'm sorry that happened. But I love when you first you asked, he's like, did you grill the pizzas? <laughs> <laughs> So much of the plot is being like, so what were the toppings, of course, on the pizzas? <laughs> oh, no, that is an important question. And how did you grill them? When you charcoal? <laughs> I think it's a grill all the time. I'm like, where did this girl get a grill? I know. Where is she grilling? Because it's At not their, in Chinatown. Also, when the hell did they live together? Whose apartment were they living in? What do you mean? Because the premise is that they're living, they had a shared apartment. And then he moves all his stuff out of there. But we never get to see that in the show. Hannah and Elijah? No, no. no Charlie no. and Charlie. And Marty. Oh, oh well, it's because the season passed. Yeah, we we are supposed to imagine that they because in the season finale of season two they I really know, were hanging. Who do you think is like most dependent on like male love? Is it Marnie? Well, the celebrity mm. memoir book club girls would say Lena Dunham herself, <laughs> <laughs> the narrator. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry, like the, cut the that. honey, the viewer. No, I agree with that. Wait, but because but like Hannah Sinos isn't because remember the episode. I actually watched a bunch of the episodes before to prepare for this. Thanks for studying. Of course. And when um, they're talking about like what would happen if she died and Adam was like, if you died, like my whole world would explode. And then Hannah's like, if you died, it would be like a bummer. And I'd also be like, how do I pay rent? Yeah. But like, it's Marnie. Because Hannah sometimes is a little more independent. Hannah definitely is because her parents loved her so much that she loves herself. This sucks. And so she doesn't need a guy so much because she really does love herself. Whereas Marnie has the abandonment father. Oh father's my God, she's wound. quoting Ray. Yeah, so we're trying to figure out. <laughs> That's rock bottom. We're it's trying to figure bottom. out because Shoshana's not like doesn't care. Like she is looking at a man for financial purposes. So it's between <laughs> Jessa and her shitty dad and Marnie and her absent dad. Who who needs boy more? I'm thinking. Radika. I think it's I Marnie. Radika. I do think it's Marnie. I think Jessa actually knows how to be alone. No, it is Marnie because if we look at it, we're gonna see. Mr. Desi coming up soon. It's like that is all about finding validation. No, 100%. Because Marty is like in these long term so relationships with the worst people on earth. Yeah. yeah. I mean, jo- Booth Jonathan, it's like she. Wait, well, the AC's been on. Oh, no. What does that mean? No, I'll fix it in post, but let's turn it off. Um, well, I mean, look at. The whole relationship is, I, I just need everyone to know that it's like there could not have been more technical difficulties <laughs> where it almost feels like I'm on a prank show. <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready for you guys to be like, this was never recording. I know we're in minute 30 of the podcast, but we've been recording for three and a half hours and we accidentally recorded the first half of the podcast in With slow mo- motion oh, video <laughs> and the audio um, died. I feel like you're going to, you guys are going to re release the episode, but like recast me. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be like when um Rachel Dratch was recast in 30 Rock with Jenna. <laughs> no, not that. You're you're pretty enough. Thanks. The whole premise was that she wasn't pretty enough. Oh. So they had to recast her in 30 Rock. Really disrespectful on BC. With a blonde blue. Rachel Dratch was really funny as Debbie Downer. You should have let her be in the show, not as just a janitor one time. <sighs> you say that. Black coffee and one slice of turkey until 4 p.m. And then you can do whatever you want. Literally Words so mood. <laughs> Every single girl I know is like, no, I oh, try I not. I like, I gained 25 pounds, but then I lost 30. <laughs> I, would, I would love for both of you to have a normal relationship with me. <laughs> if I, like when I make a wish on 11-11, I always wish that you guys like had dinner normally. <laughs> What would that look like? Anything. Pharaoh and chicken again? <laughs> no. <laughs> that you free, that you let free dry in the fridge. <laughs> Every Monday, Evan grills two giant chicken breasts on I'm a roof so and pain. then just throws them in the fridge loose. 
<laughs> and eats part of them throughout the week. Like no Tupperware, just raw dog in the fridge. Just true. Okay, now I usually cover it, but again, I'm experiencing really bad brain fog. You usually cover it in, since before I met you? Wait, do you have long COVID? I'm just, no, because I, I had COVID. I'm just like, I'm going through something bad right now. <laughs> You're like, I just had COVID and it's lasting long. I don't have long COVID. <laughs> 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 I know. Maybe I have long COVID every, but I'm good for like I can do like 30 minutes. But this is really hard for me. Okay, actually. well let's finish up. You guys have never let me forget once that this has been hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> you you've been an absolute pr- pleasure. I, mean, the world. <laughs> I started throwing up. <laughs> you've been an absolute. Ple- <laughs> um, I will say I know we said Marnie is the one that's most seeking the validation, but it is funny when Hannah says the line. Adam asked me for nothing, so I give him everything. everything. Every girl in the world is like that. It's like my boyfriend doesn't boss me around, so I am at his beck and call for no reason. I uh, okay. Some part, oh a huge part God. of me is so being like, Pratt. is I hate that like in America we care so much about romantic stuff and not platonic stuff. But then also it's like it's actually fine to care about romantic stuff. Like I hate when people are like. Oh, it's fine being single. Like, swipe right on yourself. Love yourself. And it's, like, totally. But, like, it's really normal to want a relationship. Like, that doesn't make you, like, a monster. It doesn't make you a monster to want to love. Yeah, why wouldn't you want, like, someone to, like, no, but God forbid, put your, your arms around you? Yeah, literally. No, it is beautiful. But it's also, like, it's because we don't have a focus on the platonic stuff. Like, that's, again, why this show, it has that interesting lens of round friendship. No, we don't, but we this, never this show is platonic. not a really good defense of platonic relationships. No, I it's think it really is. Not. Because no, it does I, such a bad job. I think, but there's so many fulfilling platonic relationships. Like, I feel like some of the soulmates in my life are platonic. But I still think it says such a focus on platonic that. relationships. <laughs> By the way, I don't believe that at all. I mean, sell out so anyone for my dating. boyfriend. But, like, so many shows are just about dating. This show yeah. kind of still has platonic. I it's still centered it, around I, a friend group. I think it, it has, I think both can be true. Both realities can exist together. Bi is valid and real. Yeah. <laughs> one of us is Ginger Vitus and one of us is Bi. <laughs> and we won't reveal who. <laughs> Guess below. <laughs> girl, get, get your, your Glock. Glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire, fire time. time. Are you a school girl or are you getting schooled, girl? <laughs> school girl. Why uh, or would you rather live in a nice building facing an ugly building or an ugly building facing a nice building? Oh, ugly facing. Oh, that's so hard though. I'd rather be in an ugly building facing a nice building, but I'd rather be a hot person dating an ugly person. <laughs> and I need to clarify that. <laughs> What's your favorite utensil? Uh, uh, girl, let me ask a question. Oh, sorry. Jesus Christ. I'm like, I don't eat What's food. What's your favorite so. utensil? <laughs> I don't eat, so I, I don't actually need utensils. <laughs> um, no, I like to use my fingers and um, people get mad about that. And I'm like, that's so lame. That's so lame. That's empirical. <laughs> That's empirical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what beach house room are you calling shotgun on? Ooh. Um, lighthouse. What is your art of French cooking? Um, I like hot dogs. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> what does inertia mean? Inertia is like, okay, it's going the same and it's, it's going the same. Oh yeah, it's like two cars. Yeah, inertia is when you're like, um, like like inertia is a uh, drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, isn't inertia when it's like things are just staying the same and it's like it's like the passive. It's like you're not actively changing anything. It's just like on the same route. It's like that you're not. Really, it's like no What's resistance. That law of physics where it's like an object in motion will stay, stay in, in motion unless acted on by an equal or opposite force. Yeah, exactly. So that's why it's like they stay. They all stay friends because of inertia. Because it's like it's easier to do that than to make a change, which is like to stop being friends. You just kind of keep doing it because that's how it's always been done. Oscar. That's beautiful. Sometimes I'm geniusy. <laughs> Does Barney's have a glove department? Yeah, actually. Barney's isn't around anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck Mary Kill, Paul, Pal, and Gerald. Oh my god, I'd love to fuck all those guys. Shit. <laughs> don't make me choose. Um, I don't know any of their names, but I would kill the the one who's mean. Pal. The little one. And I would um I'd really want to marry the dancer because I think we could do a gorgeous collab on a one woman <laughs> show. And then the other random one who has a BFA, I would love to fuck the one yeah, with the BFA. That's actually perfect. And BFA is an SDI, by the way. <laughs> so you better wear a condom because you can get a BFA. <laughs> Where did Hannah get that hat? That's so funny. That's so funny. Where did Hannah get that hat? Where did Hannah get that hat? Did she, did it was just like in a room? I know, right? I couldn't tell if like, does she sincerely think that looks cool? Yeah, I think of course. she's having fun. 
think she's okay with being silly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um wait, you wear funky hats. What's that? What a hat? I can't think of Hair Saintly. Trying to look like here nightly. We've been there, we've been there. 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 And we're saying that because the Wizards of Waverly Place podcast is not releasing new episodes right now due to the strike. So we're pulling up the slack. We support the strike. And um, I would love to be part of the WGN one day. Why is Marnie pulling you aside at the pool, girl? Mm. Um, I, It's probably because like uh, my my bathing suit is off. <laughs> <laughs> girl, let's, let's put that top back on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, none of them had bathing suits on. All the gays kind of just went straight for pool. Also, whose house were they supposed to be sleeping at? It was Marnie's mom's friend. No, no, I meant like the the gay gay guys. guys. They all slept there. They were going to be at Billy Eichner's house. (laughs) (laughs) And this is a bro forward um, (laughs) podcast. Totally. Uh, What's your Daffy Duck? Um, This is for some reason like harder than the SAT. (laughs) Can you do an impression? Inside. Absolutely not. I don't know. <laughs> okay, and, and then finally, finally, perfect for spirit. <laughs> um, would you rather be perfect or spirited at dancing? <sighs> spirited. Yeah. Yeah. We great job, girl. That was tough. That's really good. We really put you through the the ringer. The ringer. <laughs> All three of us like we have such a loose grasp on the English language. <laughs> Are you ready for the last section of the podcast? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That, that outfit, outfit in North, North Fork. Fork. Uh huh. So this is where we compare North Fork, Fork now <laughs> to North Fork then, <laughs> which I have a lot of knowledge about. Of course, <laughs> I hope you researched that one. Uh-huh. A plus. Um, okay. Is there anything that be? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a few. This I can, is like I can start us off. Shoshana's <laughs> reading her newspaper on her phone. That's so ahead of the times. Oh wait. I agree. Like, even them doing a dance before TikTok, I was like, you guys have your finger on the pulse. That is no, so literally. real. Like, now it'd be a little bit more like, <sighs> but energy, yeah, be a little quicker. but it was, it was impressive. There'd be a beat. There's not the same beat we got going on here, but they're killing it. They're executing. And you know what? It's fine to Hannah with messing up a little bit. I think spirited can be good on TikTok. No, but I I actually do become like a fascist when I'm like, we're all trying to have fun. And then I'm like, um, you were, you were lagging in your off pitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's why so they didn't Marty. let you into acapella. There's one Domino's on the North Fork now. Uh, is there? Yeah, I looked it up. I love Domino's. Um, Uggs are back. Uggs are incredible. Um, when Shoshana's in her little oh, no, outfit, I was like, I'm going to copy that today. I have three shoes. One Uggs, two platform flip-flops, three cowboy boots. That's Ooh. it. That is true about you. Is that really all you have? Yeah, because Uggs are for winter. You have running are shoes? For, I run in my cowboy boots. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and I also wear my cowboy boots to the beach. I flip-flops. I believe that you would wear boots to the beach. I did. They're they're filled in with sand right now. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Anything else from this episode that you were like, wait. White cheddar goldfish. That is, that hits for me. That hits. White cheddar goldfish. Yeah. No shoes, no shirt, no service. We don't really, people don't value a different flavor of goldfish like they used to. Like when I was a kid, I was eating extreme flavor blasted goldfish all the time. (gasps) The flavor blasted ones were unreal. I know. A pretzel goldfish. I'm like, that pretzel really is goldfish. I feel like people would be like, if you gave an Amish kid a flavor blast of goldfish, they would like die instantly. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I love that they're always like, if this kid ate a Sour Patch Kid, they'd die. Yeah, they're like, if a dinosaur had Pop Rocks, it would explode. (laughs) (laughs) And like, corn syrup isn't that dangerous. They say about ducks too, though. It's like you give them anything, they all die. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, you know how they <laughs> that throw, famous quote. You know how they throw rice at weddings, but they're like, stop, it kills the pigeons because it expands in their stomach and they fall out of the sky. Is that true? Yeah. Mm. You guys are like should start a science podcast. <laughs> We're always I'm saying so that. much. I'm learning I so much. I made up my fact. It is 9 p.m. and we started at noon. Of course. So you should ultimately wrap it up, but I don't want it to end. I know I, I care about you guys so much, and I do really care about girls. I will say that to me, female friendship is everything, and I do feel. Who that- are your female friends? <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick question. You're like, I'm sorry, like- my boyfriend's calling. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. The way I couldn't think of one woman. <laughs> I'm like, wait, nope, that's a guy as well. <laughs> like my ex boyfriend. Well, my current boyfriend has You're long really hair, so he's a girl. Your current boyfriend is a lesbian in many your ways. Kind of your circle right now is non-binary. Your boyfriend. My yeah, my boyfriend is like so lesbian coded. 
Because he like he always wears cologne and like he <laughs> cleans all the time and his hair is long. Yeah, and like I can tell he like puts oil in his and hair. And he's like reading like Virginia Wolf when oh, I come home. Isn't that insane? How I many bookcases really does he have? He has so many books and then I have to like Google like summaries and pretend I've read them. He I hope was, he doesn't listen to He this. was a past guest on it. the podcast, so that could be fun to guess. We've, I think we said your name during episode, so <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> He's like, Agent calls to remove this. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I'm worried if I grid post him, I'm going to lose like 10,000 followers. You don't <laughs> and I only have 2,000. <laughs> I have like negative 8,000 after I could post really? them. Every single time she posts a photo, she's like, I'm going to lose 10K. She really, that's her same reaction too. Here's the thing. She it's thinks, it's true. Do you lose, how many followers do you lose every time you post? Like four to seven. Right? Why? People, once a moment people see your face, they're like, oh, actually, I forgot I hate this person. The thing is. Oh, I right now, actually, because right now I have three viral TikToks and none of them have anything to do with me. It's all like things I saw online mm-hmm. or just like in person and I filmed it. So if I post one photo of me looking cute, I'll lose at least 200 followers. <laughs> just because no one knows what I look to like. To do a face reveal? <laughs> yeah. I feel like whenever I post something, like if I post like my body, that everyone wants that. But if I post like my diploma, I'll lose like 400 followers. <laughs> <laughs> it's. So people, bad. people can't figure out who my Instagram's for or like what my goal with every post is. Now, what is, is your Instagram so for? So people don't really get it. You're like, um, you make it like Emma Chamberlain 2019 posts. Yeah, like I think I'm trying to be like a teen influencer in 2017. <laughs> Wait, I'm so, like, this is another person. Emma Chamberlain, I feel like I have seven computer screens and I'm constantly typing trying to figure out who that is. And I know that she's a famous YouTuber, but now it just seems like she sells coffee. Is that primarily yeah, she sells she coffee does? and podcasts. She sells coffee So basically her UTA agents were like, how do we elongate your income as you grow out of a teenager who vlogs because you don't want to post YouTube content? And they're like, well, let's attach your name to a product and she always talks about coffee so it makes a natural sense and what they're trying to do is she's originally in the face of Chamberlain coffee but they're trying to skew away from that so they're making everybody buy into her brand with her face but then they're turning every flavor of coffee she sells into like a little like owl or puppy or whatever so people become emotionally attached to those animals instead of Emma so then she doesn't have to even have anything to do with the brand and just be rich um that's absolutely epic so every lunch break i kind of try and watch a video essay about this culture um you should teach a class my god but yeah that's her and you know of course she famously moved from the world of youtube to like fashion um because she got sponsored by that one like louis Louis vuitton Vuitton. and so then she's like getting really into that and now she's a full-blown celebrity yeah, I would um I would encourage her team to reach out. <laughs> I would love to kind of work with them. That sounds really cool. Okay, we have to end. Okay, thank you so love much you. for being love on, you. Tessa. Um, check out the room Tessa is Bell. spinning for me. This um, isn't good. Oh, wait, can you follow me on Instagram? I do do stand-up comedy, um, and I would love to be cast in your projects. That's perfect. Please. Hey, good work, girl. <laughs> That's a good plug. That's a good plug. Um, just a reminder, we are doing a live show on Our October 6th at 9.30. It's 9:30. a Friday. Sorry. Um, it's all, it's the whole lineup is going to be past us of the podcast. Um, so it's going to be super fun. Check it out. And we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.